after a longer wait than I expected, my uh, part two of my Lego um, video games ranking kind of through the years thing is right now. This is it. Um, uh, I'm going to just cut to the chase because the last video was super long, so I'm not going to have a super long intro. This game never existed. I would probably not be playing PlayStation and Xbox like I am now. Until I got this game, every LEGO game I owned was on the Wii, and I mean, I liked it that way. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Circumstances I don't have time to explain resulted in me getting this game for PlayStation 3 when I eventually got it. And back then, PlayStation 3 wasn't a console I was super familiar with. I mean, really the only games I'd played on the, P on the PlayStation up until then were like the Madden games and like, um, Little Big Planet. Besides the nostalgia factor, um, it was a really massive step up. Um, it, it for th this game was a massive step up. It didn't really even feel like a Traveler's Tales game because the levels were a lot more fun than they had been in the past. Um, I I think because this is one of the first games that had like talking dialogue that could make the cutscenes longer. And now in Lego games, cutscenes are so long. Um, and the variety of the, the variety and sheer amount of characters was increased on an otherworldly level. And the free roaming? Well, let's just say this. Playing the game at seven years old, which is how, I, how old I was when I started playing it, uh, I felt like I was playing Grand Theft Auto V. Uh, or, you know, GTA V. I, I always call it that. I don't know why I have to be lame. Um, now this is a stupid thing to say because I've played GTA V and it's a way different game. But think about it. You could steal cars in both games, and you could do small errands for random strangers for a monetary reward in both games. I could go on, but this game set the golden standard for free roaming in LEGO games. And I'd be willing to argue that it has, like, the best free roaming experience in any LEGO game. Okay, I'm kidding. There's one game that tops it, but we'll get to that later. Uh, this game really fed my intrigue and creativity for superheroes. You know... Going into this, I, I was really a DC person. I didn't really like Marvel, and I don't know why. Um, maybe it was... I, I don't know. Um, but, you know, going into this game, I was playing these characters, and I never, I never liked Spider-Man. I never liked Iron Man. I was always, you know, a big fan of... I, I only really liked Batman and the Justice League. Uh, and then this game, you know, and I was playing it, and I was like, Wow, Iron Man is so cool! Or like, wow... I need to watch the Spider-Man movies. Like, this is awesome. Um, it's one of the rare games that has affected me as both a gamer and a person, which sounds kind of lame and, like, too sappy when I'm talking about a Lego game. But it is the truth, and this one is obviously going at number one, dethroning Lego Batman the video game. This is a good game. That's really all there is to it. I, everything about the game felt like a cut above the first two in the series, definitely a way cut above Lego Batman 2. I mean, I do think the main storyline is a little bit weird and kind of lame and, you know, lacks... This is gonna sound weird, but it lacks meat. It lacks meat. You need to have meat to a storyline or else it's just gonna kind of fall apart in your fingers. Um... But I that was, you know, because Traveler's Tales needed to find a way to incorporate, uh, like, outer space and the ring planets into a, um, into a, like, into a, a Lego Batman game, which is awesome. Uh, you know, I, yeah, um, speaking of which, I, I loved exploring the Seven Ring planets both in story and in free roam now i could explain all of them but then this video would be about four hours long because trust me i know my stuff um and each planet it's a lot different than the next there's a lot of different ecosystems uh i really like that it's sort of hard to tell just how large the free roam map is because it's scattered out like across different planets like that the negative thing i have about exploring all of the planets is that each planet on Free Realm is significantly smaller than the planet in the level. They're so small that the ground actually isn't flat. Like, you can tell that the ground isn't flat, um, and you can actually fly a complete, a complete loop around the entire planet in, like, a matter of seconds. Um, and, but, you know, that is kind of asking a lot, having seven planets. Seven planets? and a whole bunch of other areas uh, for free roam. 
Uh, it's a lot when you factor in how long it takes to get 100% completion. That game would take forever, and they they kind of did that in a later LEGO game that I'm going to explain, which maybe that was good, maybe that was bad. You'll have to find out. Uh, but this is overall a great game. Uh, it's stacked against a bunch of the other great games, though, so I have to put it between LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga and LEGO Harry Potter Years 5 through 7. This isn't fair. This really isn't fair. Do it, nerd. Do it, or you know what happens. How did you get my gun? In a previous video, um, I made a dig against LEGO Dimensions. I believe it was my review of LEGO The Incredibles. Uh, and I basically said that, um, I don't remember my exact words, but something like Dimensions can go back to the, like, dung pit it came from, or something like that. Um, and I don't normally do this with my opinions, but I take that back. Uh, you see, when Lego Dimensions first came out, I thought it was the next big thing, and I, and for the most part, you know, it kind of was, and I really wanted it, like, super bad, and I got it one year for Christmas, uh, and pretty quickly, it was a disappointment. Uh, first of all, it took a really long time for the, for its data to load onto my PlayStation 4, which is especially weird, because normally, uh, physical disc copies, um are, like, they load pretty quickly. It's downloads that take a while. But after that, I still couldn't play it because I had to set up the build gamepad, which was fun, and set up all the characters and vehicles that I had. But besides that, you know, the gameplay itself was just kind of like any other LEGO game. frustrating about having to use the gamepad where no other LEGO game was like that. Uh, also, you, you know how when you're playing a level in story mode, you see something that your character can't use, so you have to buy a character that uses that? Well, because all the playable characters are accessed through physical figures placed on a gamepad, you have to go to the store and buy a pack for real money. Usually like 20 to $30. Now, in most LEGO games, characters can cost upwards of $500,000, but that's in-game in money, which literally falls from the sky sometimes. It's a bit of a drag, and it makes getting 100% completion on the game really hard and tedious. I will admit, I will admit, that, um... Uh, there is something that they have called Hire a Hero, which is actually really ingenious because the developers understood how frustrating it could be for people that don't have that many characters. So for a uh, small, kind of big, but small, normally it's like a, like, like 150,000 studs, maybe it's more like 50. You can uh, use a character that you do not have, and it's basically like a I don't know if a ghost is the right term, but it's basically like a copy of the character, and I thought that that, you know, really, really worked. Um, after completing all of the campaign missions in the game, uh, I kind of stopped playing it, but for some reason I didn't get rid of it, and I just stored all the game pieces in my closet and kept a copy of the game with all the other games. Now we flash forward years later, and recently I was watching a YouTube video where LEGO Dimensions was mentioned, and I thought, you know, I should try playing that again. But then I was like, but wait a minute, I can't because I got rid of the game pad. I knew I still had the game because I, you know, I'd see it every time I look for other games. I was certain I had trashed all the game pad in pieces. So I went on the internet and I'm like, oh, it costs a lot. And then I finally kind of like abandoned it. But then I'm like, what if I'm assuming that I got rid of the game pad? Because if I didn't, that would be pretty legendary. Uh, and after searching, I found the game pad. Um, I set everything up and started playing, and I cannot believe it, because I thought I offloaded the data from my PS4, but it actually still had my save file, so I, even though I, yeah, so I could still play, like, pick up right where I left off. I was kind of at that point looking forward to just starting from square one, but I actually didn't complain, excuse me, in the long run, it was pretty awesome, um... In conclusion, even though there are many, like, huge problems with this game, it's still really fun and awesome to see so many famous characters from movies and TV shows being immortalized in, like, as LEGO characters. And, like, it's got, like, kind of negative nostalgia. Like, it still brings back, like, oh, this is so tedious. But the thing is, is it's still nostalgia. And I think that's, you know, pretty good enough for me. And besides, it's a LEGO game. Come on, guys. All LEGO games are pretty much made equal. Um, but I'm still gonna put it, uh, between Lego Harry Potter's years 1 through 4 and Batman 2 Beyond Gotham. <laughs> oh, this? 
Yeah, this is just a, a worse version of LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. I think because this game followed the actual Avengers movies instead of an original storyline, like uh, the original LEGO Marvel Super Heroes did, it felt a little bit odd, and don't get me wrong, because I do love the roster of playable characters from this game. Sign me up. But it's the gameplay. It, it It's... It's just like Lego Marvel Super Heroes, but without the glamour sensation of Lego Marvel Super Heroes. And besides that, the free roam map is the exact same as the one in Lego Marvel Super Heroes, which is great. I love that map, but this time it's locked in the evening. Now here's the thing, when a game is stuck at midday, it's barely noticeable. When a map is stuck at dusk or night, it feels a little weird. Now granted, the first and I think only LEGO game to have the map rotating between day and night is LEGO Incredibles, uh, which was released years after this, so don't, you know, that's not against it. Um, the other thing is the mini map, uh, the mini map that helps you know where you are and how to get to where you need to be in free roam is styled like a radar screen, which is great that, you know, that's super original, I love it, but everything is identified as either a pink, yellow, or blue dot, depending on what it is, and this makes it, like, impossible to distinguish one thing on the map from the other, and it also makes it harder to reach those areas. I, it feels like a big step back from the original um, LEGO Marvel game, uh, and I haven't played this game nearly as as enough as I should, uh, I think it would, I would like it more if I had played it more, but for now I'm putting it between Lego Harry Potter years 1 through 4 and Lego Dimensions. For all the Office fans out there, I'm gonna do my best Robert California impression. Nothing will ever be like Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. This game does everything right! It learned from the past mistakes and follows an original storyline that just kicks butt. Just just listen to this sentence. The intergalactic villain Kang the Conqueror invades Manhattan and literally abducts it, putting in a fictional megacity called Chronopolis because it includes various different places from different countries, time periods, and galaxies. It's a gargantuan map that has Manhattan, Wakanda, Medieval England, Nueva York, basically New York in the year 2099, Saqqar, Asgard, Xander, the Wild West, Hala, Manhattan Noir, Ancient Egypt, uh, Hydra Empire, the Kunlun Mountains, Ad Adelan, and Lemuria, all in one. This makes it probably the hardest LEGO game to get 100% completion on, but when you do, it's a very amazing feeling. The levels use the vast options for free roaming to make awesome levels. Sorry, that... that sentence sucked. Character roster is huge and amazing. Um, I, I think that it is the largest amount of characters. It's like over 300, but that might be including DLC, um, packs. Um, and I normally don't complain. I mean, I normally do complain about repetitive characters in rosters, but there's like six or seven different Spider-Mans and all of them are super cool and kick butt. So I don't even care, you know, just keep them coming. Uh, there's one negative thing, however. Races. Now, races are a staple in free roaming in LEGO games, and they're also a huge pain in my butt, because they're the most frustrating part. Basically, you have to drive, run, or fly through giant circles within a time limit, and I don't want to mention, but it's important that I do. Uh, this is just like the game Spider-Man, not Spider-Man, Superman N N64, which is one of the most terrible games of all time, it's basically just Spider-Man flying through loops, and, like, it, there's not a single person who likes it. Um, they just don't exist. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of un- well, it's not unfair, but it's hard. You know, don't get to the next circle in time, you lose! Don't complete the whole race overall fast enough, you lose! There's, n there's not a ton of races in this game. Actually, no, that's true. They're, they're, that's not right. There's a lot of races in this game, but most of them aren't that bad. In fact, this game kind of started the trend of some races that suit like a motorbike, uh, more might require a motorbike, and kind of the same things with 4x4s. They kind of added another style of race uh, that takes the terrible to an 11. Oh my god. Web-slinging races. Trash. <laughs>
throughout all three Marvel Lego Marvel games, web slinging is another means of transportation for characters like Spider-Man or Venom or really any character that can use um, w that sling webs. Uh, the thing about web slinging is that when it's using to cross the street or get to a destination where the means of how you get there don't really matter, it's fine and it's kind of fun. But when you need to get from one point to another in a certain manner, it sucks. Especially because most of the web slinging races require you to alternate between ascending and descending. Um, and that just doesn't really work. It, well, it's way easier to do with, like, way easier to do with a flying character. And I tried cheating by switching to a flying character after starting the race, and that's really terrible of me. And it doesn't even work. I mean, <laughs> luckily there are only two web slinging races in all of Chronopolis. Uh, if you're playing the game, and I will, if you are playing the game, I'll help you out. Uh, one of them is in the Nueva York area, uh, where you travel from there to medieval England, and that unlocks Spider-Man UK, which I don't think that's really worth it. It's not worth it. Spider-Man UK is not worth it at all. It's super hard. But if you're trying to get 100% completion, go for it. You gotta do it at some point. And then the other one from Wild West, the Hydra Empire, unlocks Spider-Woman. The one that unlocking... The one with the Spider-Man UK, it's more about just... It's hard. It's really hard. The one with S Spider-Woman is... I think... Well, actually, no. I, I had less of a problem with the one, with the one that unlocks uh, Spider-Woman. But the problem is, is that... Um, like the path, the, 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 the order of, and the positioning of the hoops isn't that bad, but I had troubles completing the entire race fast enough. Um, but anyways, uh, besides that, there's also parkour races that sound like fun, but also suck. Uh, not as much as web slinging and that this was kind of a kink that was worked out in later games. The parkour in, I think, LEGO Incredibles and LEGO DC Super Villains is way better. This was a really super tough one, but the thing is, is this game is just so excellent that I kind of have no choice but to put it at number one. <laughs> I already did a full review of this game a while back, that was almost 30 minutes. I do not want to talk any more about this game. I already literally, like, covered, like, everything. Uh, and there's not much, yeah, there's not much I need to say. Uh, besides that, it's a pretty average LEGO game. It's remarkably easy to get 100% completion. The game does have a pretty stellar playable character roster. I ragged on it in my review, but that was before I unlocked most of the superhero characters. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I, I do want to do a video later where I'm talking about, like, my favorite, um, LEGO characters, like, from each of the LEGO games I've played, and I definitely know who I'm gonna pick from this one um anyways uh uh i don't want to waste your time any more than i already have because this video is already as long as i i want it to be shorter than 20 minutes this time i'm just gonna get to the chase and place it between lego marvels avengers and lego dimensions this is the best lego dc game by far and as you create a custom character that actually plays to the storyline which wow you really have outdone yourself lego and it's another original story, too, with the evil version of the Justice League, basically called the Crime Syndicate. Oh, I get it. Um, and they're posing as them while helping Darkseid and the world, you know. it's It kind of, now that I think about it, sounds a little bit like Endgame. But uh, if we do the math here, Endgame came out in, I think it was like May of 2019. And this game, I believe, came out sometime in 2018, so couldn't have been ripping off Endgame, because Endgame hadn't came out yet. But like Lego Batman 3, the heroes and the villains team up because they both have a common enemy. Uh, and this game also has one of the best menu screens. It's... It is, um... What's the word? Uh... Minimalist. It is minimalist, but... Uh, it's got an awesome and awesome purple and green color combo, while Joker and the Thief by Wolf Mother is blasting. I highly recommend you look that song up. Uh, it's on Spotify. Normally, I do not like heavy metal music, but this song is a definite uh, exception. Uh, this game also has a free roam map that almost rivals that of LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. Why am I saying that? How? That's not possible, but it's got, I mean, it, it, it does got everything. It's got Gotham, Metropolis, Smallville, Arkham, Apocalypse. There's also a lot of weird connections I made to GTA in this game. You know, like all, like in all recent LEGO games, you can steal cars, but 
it goes beyond that. It's 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 kind of creepy. One of the first places you visit in Free Roam is Gotham, and with its drab atmosphere and a large monorail system covering the streets like a blanket, it instantly reminded me of Liberty City from GTA 4. Also in Smallville, the large mountains in the back remind me kind of of like Mount Chiliad in GTA 5. I know that's kind of a stretch, but I need more information to support my theory. You see what I'm saying? But probably the most obvious reference is how the GPS system in the lower left-hand corner doubles as an iPhone that can read texts from the people you interact with in free-roaming missions. Like in GTA 5! Character roster is also great in this game. There were a lot of characters I really liked. Especially Grid. Grid's like the evil version of Cyborg. And throughout most of the free roaming I played as Grid, and he was my go-to, so I really connected with him. It felt like we had known each other our entire lives. Then I checked myself into a mental hospital. This stay-at-home thing is really wearing on my psyche. Moving off to the madness and on to the races, uh, yeah, the races were fine, and the boat races were, you know, they were kind of hit or miss, which is sad. I really liked the boat races in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. Now just a little seg segue tangent thing. I noticed a lot of weird parallels between um, LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 and LEGO DC Super Villains. They seem like kind of like their own versions of the same game, which I don't know. I kind of like that. Um, there were this new, there's this new thing called gliding races where characters that could glide were the only uh, characters allowed to use them to, you know, compete in them. I don't know what you word you use for that. Uh, these races, however, defy the physics of their own game. In these races, sometimes the ring is higher than the other one, and it's nearly impossible to ascend while gliding. I mean, if people tried that, there would be, like, a whole lot more, you know, hang gliding accidents. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose of gliding, you know what I mean? You know, you know... Can you imagine yourself going, I can't do this! What am I doing for? Oh my gosh, I... I can't do cutaway gags on this show. I, I just really can't. Um, but anyways, if, if you switch to a flying character, it actually works. Uh, which is... Yeah, it's cheating, but whatever. <laughs> um... Uh, you can basically cheat your way through those races, and I looked on the internet to see what they did for these races, and the first hit I got just told me to cheat, um, and I already done that, so I'm like, you know what, if everyone cheats at the race to complete it, that's not cheating, you know? Uh, doing a, a reference to a character from Lego Incredibles, when everyone's a hero, no one is, or no. When everyone's super, no one is. I need to watch that movie again. Alright, well, okay. This was a really fun game, um, and the only problems I had were just a few bugs. For example, playing story mode on the last level, which is epic, I may say. Um, and also, it's a, the name of it's a cutesy reference to Pink Floyd. Um, I was playing as the Joker, and I got stuck on a slippery mud plot pile that led to an ocean of lava. And I kept, you know, like, you, you, I respawned at the top of the of the pile, and I just kept sliding down and down and down, and I just keep respawning and dying and respawning and dying and respawning and dying. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and I did not like it. I just kept dying over and over and over and over and over again, and I just... Ugh. Um, I had to restart the level, and then when I did, I got myself out of that situation... But then Lex Luthor got stuck under the floor. I mean, I was I was so worried I'd have to restart it a second time, but he eventually got himself out of there. But, um, I was not happy. Uh, I was so worried, uh, yeah, but I think this game is a masterpiece. And it doesn't hurt that the game actually congratulates you at the Hall of Doom if you get 100% completion, which I did, and it was awesome. Um, my dad tells me that it's weird that I can say that a game both was really messed up and bugged and also a masterpiece at the same time, but this game did it, you know, that's, that's kind of how it goes, uh, and it was awesome. I put this game between Lego Marvel Super Heroes and Lego Batman, that is where I am at with it. Summarize it all up in this order, um of me ranking the lego games i've played it goes lego marvel Super Heroes 2 lego marvel Super Heroes, lego dc super villains lego batman the video game lego pirates of the caribbean the video game 
Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham, Lego Harry Potter Years 5 through 7, Lego Harry Potter Years 1 through 4, Lego Marvel Avengers, Lego Incredibles, Lego Dimensions, Lego Batman 2 DC Superheroes, and Lego Indiana Jones The Original Adventures. Last time. Um, it's important for me that you know that I only included Lego games that I have played. Uh, so if you didn't see a game on this list, uh, it's not that I forgot it. I just haven't played it enough to have my opinion on it. So, uh, that, finally we got that out of there. I told you about the month of, months of mask. Uh, I need to think of an idea of, like, my next video that I can do on that. Um, maybe I'll do, like, my favorite performances of all time. But I also really want to get into, uh, Big Brother. And, um, it feels like there are some rumors that next season of Big Brother is going to be an all-star. So I have dra I have written an entire script for, like, my draft of who I'd like to see in this all-stars season. Um, but yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And I am so happy if you stay through this video. Um, this video is, I think, now the second longest video I've ever made. But yeah, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you very, very soon.